Creating a Work-Life Schedule This project was created as a partnership between the Refugee Development Center and St. Vincent's Refugee Services to support the Workforce and Innovation Opportunity Act program. In this presentation, we will be discussing work-life balance and how to achieve it. What is work-life balance and why is it important? What are some things you can do to relax? How do you have a conversation with your employer about the need for time off from work? A work-life balance refers to the idea that to enjoy life, we need to balance our energies between work and free time. While work is important for things like paying the bills, buying things like a house or car, and saving for retirement, we cannot use all of our energy towards our work life. We also need time for other things that are important like family, friends, hobbies, taking care of our home or garden, civic activities, spiritual development, physical exercise, spending time in nature, personal growth, and self-care. Take some time to think about what is important in your life. What do you enjoy doing? What makes you happy? Who makes you happy? How much time do you spend focusing your energy of what is important to you? Do you have free time? How do you spend your free time? Take some time to think about why you work as well. Are you working to meet your basic needs such as food, shelter, clothing, and water? Is your income enough to pay your monthly bills like rent, gas, water, electricity, insurance, and phone? Are you working to save money to buy a house or a car or saving for educational expenses or retirement? Do you work to have money for travel, entertainment, or shopping for non-essential items? Do you work because you enjoy your job or do something meaningful to you? One of the important reasons to strive to have a good work-life balance is to not suffer from too much stress. Let's spend a little time to talk about stress. What is stress anyway? Stress is defined as a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from very demanding or adverse circumstances. Stress can be positive or negative. It can be draining and cause problems, but it can also be a push we need to accomplish something meaningful or important. In reality though, stress is difficult to define. Not everyone experiences stress in the same way and not everyone feels stress from the same things. But there are some common signs that a person is feeling stress. These include acne, headaches, chronic pain, frequent sickness, decreased energy, insomnia, changes in libido, digestive issues, changes in appetite, depression, rapid heartbeat, and sweating. You will not necessarily experience all of these symptoms when you are feeling stress, but if you notice changes in the way of these, it may be a sign that you are under too much stress. Now that we have looked at what stress is, we will consider what some of the things that may cause stress are. Some common causes of stress include death of a loved one, divorce, loss of job, increased financial obligations, getting married, moving, chronic illness or injury, poor mental health, taking care of a sick or elderly family member, experiencing a traumatic event, being unhappy in your job, having too many responsibilities at work, working long hours, having unclear instruction or expectations, poor management, working in dangerous conditions, 
being at risk for losing your job, worrying about a promotion, or facing discrimination or harassment. Too much stress is bad for your health. Your body releases hormones that can cause a number of serious health conditions, including depression, high blood pressure, heart problems, irritable bowel syndrome, weight loss or gain, fertility problems, skin conditions, among others. Learning to recognize and manage stress is important to staying healthy. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs What is it that we need to live a happy and healthy life? Maslow, a psychologist, developed a hierarchy of needs. The idea that if we are able to meet all of the lower types of needs, we are able to reach a place of self-actualization, where we are able to live as the best version of ourself or meet our full potential. At the bottom of the pyramid, we need to meet our physiological needs. This means we need to meet the needs for breathing, food, water, sex, and sleep. It means we meet the needs for survival. After meeting survival needs, we need to meet needs related to safety. These include feeling of being safe, having employment, access to necessary resources, not worrying about death, and having family health and property. After meeting needs for safety, we need to meet needs of love and belonging. This refers to friendship, family, and sexual intimacy. After meeting the needs of love and belonging, we aim to meet needs for esteem. This is having a good sense of self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, and respect from others. Finally, if we meet all of the lower needs, we can begin to think of things like morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, and the acceptance of facts. A healthy life. Be sure you are getting enough sleep every day. Most adults should aim at getting seven to nine hours of sleep every day. Sleep is important because it helps you stay healthy and prevent illness. Sleep is also needed to refresh your mind so you can concentrate, think clearly, and remember things. Be sure to eat a healthy diet. A healthy diet, according to the CDC, emphasizes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and fat-free or low-fat milk and milk products. It includes a variety of protein foods such as seafood, lean meats, and poultry, eggs, legumes, soy products, nuts, and seeds. It is low in saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, salt, and added sugars. Be sure that you are getting some exercise each week. Exercise is also important in a healthy lifestyle. Exercise is good for both your physical and mental health. The CDC recommends getting 150 minutes of exercise per week. Of course, this can be spread out over the week. You should also do two types of exercise. One type is aerobic exercises. The other is to strengthen muscles. Do mu muscle strengthening activities that work all major muscle groups at least twice a week. If you find yourself feeling out of sorts, you should consider how your work-life balance is. If you feel tired, easily irritated, not enjoying activities you enjoyed previously, if you feel like you're constantly working, or if you do not find you do not have enough time to eat, sleep, or exercise, you should evaluate. If you are focusing too much on work and not enough on yourself, signs you may not have a good work-life balance. 
tiredness, easily irritated, not enjoying activities you enjoyed in the past, feeling like you are constantly working, not having enough time to eat, sleep, or exercise. Take a moment and think about what your goals are. When you imagine your goals, are you healthy? Do you feel good? Do you feel like your body is in good health, mentally and physically? It is easy to get burnt out if you are constantly focusing on making money or pursuing your greater goals. Everybody needs a break sometimes. Having a work-life balance ensures that you do not feel overwhelmed or get burned out. It is important to stay both physically and mentally healthy. Creating time for balance can come in the form of short breaks to long extended vacations. Here are some suggestions. Some short breaks are 5 to 30 minutes. Consider taking a walk, listening to music, taking a short nap, meditating or praying. For a bit longer break, maybe a half day or a full day off is needed. Activities like going on a picnic, having a spa day, visit a museum, the zoo, or an art installation, getting out of town for the day, head to the beach, lake, woods, or countryside. If you are really having a hard time, take some more time off. Rent a cabin and enjoy nature for a week. Choose a room in your house to redecorate. Learn some new related to your hobby. Take a complete break from social, media, phone, and email. So how do you know you need to take a break? During the regular work day, you may start to feel a little tired or sluggish. That is a good time to take a break. You may also need to schedule your breaks and take your breaks at a specific time every day. Be sure to use this time for breaks and take an actual break from work and have a conversation with your supervisor to find out their expectations. Depending on your dynamic with your supervisor or the expectation your supervisor has, you may need to ask permission to go on a break. Or you may just inform your supervisor that you're going on break. I'm going on break now. I will be back in half an hour. Is it okay if I take my break now? I need to have lunch. Also, during your break time, a coworker may ask for help with something. It is okay to just let the coworker know that you are on a break. I'm on a break right now, so I can't help you. I can help you with that. I'm sorry, I'm on a break right now. I will touch base with you when I start working again. You won't always know when you need to take a day off in advance. There are times when emergencies come up and you need to take a day off from work with little or no notice. For things that happen the day of and you are not able to tell your supervisor in person, you must call the employer and let them know that you are going to be unable to make it to work that day. Hi, this is I wanted to let you know that I'm not coming to work today. I'm not feeling well. I have a fever and a sore throat. Be aware of your workplace policies for taking time off when you are sick. Some employers will require a note from the doctor with unplanned absences. You might 
begin with an apology to indicate you realize it will be inconvenient for your manager to find somebody to fill in for your position that day. I'm sorry for the late notice, but I'm going to need to take off. My roof has a leak, and that is the day that we have the roofer to come out and give an estimate. I'm sorry for the late notice. My mom had an emergency surgery scheduled for, and I would like to be with her. Your manager may be more willing to accept your request for time off with short notice if you find someone to cover your shift for you, or if you arrange for somebody to cover your work responsibilities when you are not there. My grandfather passed away suddenly, and I will need to take the rest of the week off to prepare for the funeral. I already spoke with Jane, and she said she would be able to cover my shift on Friday, and Mark said he can cover my shift on Thursday. Remember, different companies have different policies regarding time off from work. Be sure to ask your manager what is expected of you if you need to take a day off from work without notice. Some employers allow taking mental health days. The purpose of a mental health day is to help you relieve stress. You might feel a lot of stress at work, or there is a combination of stress at work and stress at home. The idea of taking a mental health day is so that you can reduce the stress in your life. When you want to take a week or more, you are expected to ask your employer at least two weeks in advance. It is good if you plan for this time off in advance so it doesn't coincide with important meetings or deadlines. If you have a specific task you are responsible for, see if a coworker can cover these tasks during this time. You may also need to arrange for emails and phone calls to be forwarded. I would like to take the week of the we are going on vacation to Florida. I am going to be off the week of the... I am having a procedure done and I was told I will need to take a week off to recover. It is important to set boundaries with an employer. Keep in mind, when your shift is over and you have clocked out, your employer should not be expecting you to do any work when you are off the clock. Any work over 40 hours is subject to overtime pay. Overtime pay is usually one and a half times your regular rate. So for example, if you are regularly paid $10 an hour, overtime pay would be $15 an hour. You may have important family events or your child may participate in school activities which you need to attend. Let your employer know in advance so they do not schedule during these times. Just as your employer should not expect you to work after your shift is over, they also should not expect you to work if you are clocked out for a break time. Let your employer know that you are on a break and will start working after you are back on the clock. You may want to take classes or start going to college. It is okay to let your employer know about your schedule and see if they are able to work with you. Some employers are very understanding of working around schedules for students. Check how your employer will deal with your class schedule before registering for classes. Some employers are not that thoughtful of their employees. They may pay very low wages. They may not be open to taking time off and there may not be any flexibility in the position. For some people, this may not be a good fit. It could also be that the job is a bad fit. Maybe you are expected to move all day long and it makes you really tired. Maybe you are expected to talk to customers all day long, but you don't like talking to customers. Maybe your job requires you to read a lot and you don't enjoy reading. Some jobs just don't fit well. In either case, it may be time to look for a new job. It is easier to find a new job when you already have another job. 
you may also find that self-development or education is needed to find a better job. Thank you for watching. For additional information, please see our other videos.